can we agree on the fact that vaccines cause a risk? Yes, we can agree on the fact that vaccines. Now, some people say, well, the risk is very low. Listen, we can debate the risk, the amount of risk, but is there a risk? There is. Otherwise, there wouldn't be a vaccine court. Or otherwise, the pharmaceutical industry would be able to buy its own insurance to indemnify them against damages done as a result of vaccines. But no insurer who doesn't have a political axe to grind, all they do is actuarial work, if I can say the word, actuary work to see if there is a, you know, what the risks or proposed risks are, and then they calculate what it would cost to indemnify against those risks. Well, no insurance company in the world would indemnify a drug company for vaccines. Now, mind you, they indemnify for all these other drugs out there, which do kill people. Over 125,000 people per year die in the United States as a result of prescription drugs when they're properly prescribed because of unanticipated adverse effects that cannot be known on every patient every time. But they can get insurance for that, even though they pose risk. So imagine they can't even get insurance for vaccines. That's how risky they are. Now, the U.S. government says we want a vaccine program, so we will indemnify these companies. It's unprecedented that we have private industry who makes billions of dollars a year to put a product into the marketplace is indemnified by the federal government can you imagine being, I'm a business guy. He, I could have had being in business, putting something out into the marketplace that has risk, making tens of billions of dollars doing it, and I don't have any liability. It's, it's, it's an unprecedented scenario. So if we walk down the chain of logic, it looks like this. Number one, do vaccines pose a risk? Yes. We can debate the amount of risk. I think the amount of risk is very high. Others maybe think it's very low, but one thing we can agree on is that vaccines are, you know, they, there's a risk to being vaccinated. There's a risk to vaccines. We can debate the amount of risk. Number two, do high level, well-credentialed experts disagree on the safety and efficacy of vaccines? The answer is that nobody can debate the question. Yes. Now, if you saw vaccines revealed, we produced dozens of them. And these people are really impressive with their pedigree and their credentials. So you might not like my experts. Okay, that's fine. But you can't say that my experts aren't well credentialed, have expertise in the area, and they think that these vaccines are are risky and not efficacious or, you know, that they don't necessarily work. So, you know, so can we at least agree that high level experts disagree on the safety and efficacy of vaccines. So if vaccines pose a risk, and if high level experts disagree on the safety and efficacy of these vaccines, then the conclusion is, shouldn't I have a choice as to whether or not I want to vaccinate myself or my kids? And I don't know how anybody, unless they go to an irrational place, can say, yes, you must be forced to vaccinate your kids anyway. And they'll say it's for the greater good. We have to have herd immunity. Uh, Another line of part of my language of pure bullshit. But the bottom line is then, so what you're telling me, you know, and in the United States, every country's constitution, you know, their laws, et cetera, are a little bit different. But unless you're a fascist or a communist state, there's going to be, they're going to resemble the concept of individual rights. So you're telling me, that in a country where I'm guaranteed unalienable individual rights, that I have to risk my kid for the greater good? Because sacrifice of of the individual to the state, sacrifice of the individual to the greater good is the morality of communism. It's the morality of fascism. It's the morality of statism. The state owns and controls your life. You have no individual rights. Your life can and will be sacrificed for the greater good. That's the political moral argument here that's at bay. So in the total answer to the question, number one, do you know that the CDC lied about its data? 
and not just not just an MMR and autism. There's many others. If you watch the interviews in the program, you know. Number two, there is a risk. Nobody can disagree. We just disagree on the amount of risk. There is high level expert dissension as far as you know the conclusions around this. You know, and there's a lot of experts that say that vaccine safety and efficacy is not good. Um, so that exists. There's high level experts that disagree. Therefore, in a free society, I should have a choice whether or not I want to do it. That's the rational argument. And I notice I don't have to even quote a bunch of data and research. It's just the, the basic morality of the circumstance. But if somebody is blind and they're just going to rant and rave and call you a baby killer, then there's really no conversation that you can have with them. That, that's where it really leads. So I see now, and, and we're going to, folks, if it's okay, and if it's okay with you, Bo and, and, and Krista, 